Okay, welcome everyone. Can you hear me? Awesome. How is everybody's weekend? Did you guys have a nice weekend? Welcome, Tabitha. Welcome, Thomas. Great. Yeah, it was a beautiful weekend up here in Pittsburgh. Beautiful sunshine, no humidity. It was like the perfect weekend. I spent it with my daughter. We went swimming, all kinds of fun stuff. So hopefully you guys rested up, got some work done over the weekend and are ready to get into week three here. Welcome to week three, live lecture one. I'm glad you're here and listening. It is July 9th. Can you guys believe it's Ju July 9th already? It's crazy. <laughs> it just goes so fast, especially when you're students. I know when I was a student, it went really, really fast. So enjoy this time being a student. Trust me, I've been there and it, it goes so fast. So. All right. Does anybody have any questions from last week before we get started here? No, everybody's pretty good. I just want to say I saw some really strong projects from week two. So I was very, very impressed. Good job. Um, a, a lot of great logo sketches, thumbnails, and concepts going through here. So that really kind of inspires me to uh, push you guys even further. So great job. We're going to take a look at some student examples I pulled from assignment two. Uh, as we get started here, uh, I just kind of pulled a couple here, but um, very, very, very impressed. Great job. Keep up the good work. Uh, for those of you who may have not gotten received uh, as positive feedback, you know, it's always a work in progress. So, um, yeah, I've had students who start out kind of a very, you know, with very weak work. And I, as I push them along, they come out with the strongest pieces. So. Don't give up, you know, don't take my criticism at heart. This is all just trying to push you guys to be better designers. And uh, so I'm here to help you guys. I want you to, to succeed and learn and grow throughout this process. All right, so week three work, you guys need to be, this is kind of should be pretty much ingrained into your daily work, work week here. <laughs> you should know that you have your deadlines this coming, this, uh, coming Saturday before midnight for your um, assignment and your assessment three. And there's going to be a lot involved with assignment three this week. So, you know, make sure you have enough time to get that going. Discussion three, uh, of course, needs to be the initial post needs to be posted by Wednesday before possible full credit. Get those discussions going uh, as soon as possible to not only get the conversation going, but to gain as much as you can from the discussions. All right, just, just a little recap from last week when we met up on Thursday. Cause we, we met up on Wednesday and Thursday of last week. Uh, we did a, well, we, we were going to do a live critique. We really didn't have that many people in the lecture, so we kind of skipped over that. Uh, but we did do the assessment two overview. That was your quiz midterm. And then we looked at the differentiation between brand, brand identity, and logo in lecture. And I showed some examples of brand identities. So if you missed that, definitely go back and check that out. So today what we're going to be doing is just kind of, oh, looking at some student work. So in this class, we're gonna, I'm just going to show you a few that I picked out. If yours isn't in there, don't feel like yours isn't that great. I just picked a few that I thought were, were good to show. Um, so we'll take a look at that from assignment two. Uh, we'll go over your discussion three, see if you have any questions. And then again, you know, just like we normally do the assignment three overview. Um, and some examples. We're going to talk about some brand books too in between that time so you kind of understand what a brand book is. All right, so let's take a look at some projects that I uh, picked out here from last week. And this is in this class, so these are your fellow peers. And because we didn't really have a student critique section for sharing your work, it's always nice to see what other people are doing. So let's Let's go ahead and look at this. Now, I've only had a couple of you that maybe didn't turn in your thumbnails, when, you know, or maybe just showed all roughs for your 
projects. So just kind of be aware, you, you know, make sure you're reading through the instructions carefully. There's a reason why, uh, you know, you do the thumbnails first and then, you know, the roughs. It's all part of the process. Okay, so this is uh, from one of your fellow students in this class, Anita. And let's see here. It's not in the lecture as of now, but hopefully she's listening. Uh, I, I like the way that she set up these thumbnails, very nicely done presentation wise. You know, think about this, you know, your sketches don't have to look this, and I, you know, I think these look pretty good for thumbnails. I probably wouldn't be able to do this good of a job. But in regards to the overall presentation of it, even though their thumbnails really kind of put in the work to make it look presentable, especially when you're a design student, so that, you know, it doesn't look like it's just haphazardly done. Um, and this is something that you can use in your future portfolio um, to show your process steps. So if you were to show something like this, this would work out great because it's nicely, you know, gridded out. Um, it's clean and, and for the most part for the thumbnail sketches. Now she's, she kind of started this out on the very top. I don't know if you see that. It's all the keywords that were used in your descriptions. Uh, she wrote out here so nicely done. And then as she went into her thumbnails, she's really kind of exploring many different concept options here. Uh, different icons, different um, hierarchy of text, you know, different concepts of, uh, you know, orientation. Um, so they don't all look alike, which is great to see. This is really kind of the experimental part of this. So if I were to see the logo look the same, but just, you know, a few changes in each, then I'd be like, hmm, maybe you should explore some other options. This is where, you know, you get the brainstorming going. You kind of start thinking about, okay, how can I make this look unique? You know, what do I want to do? So she did a great job with coming up with some really unique concepts. And then she went into, let me zoom this in here. She did a great job with coming up with some really interesting and unique, but appropriate and simple options for her logo mark. Um, so I think this is nice, a nice balance between, um, you know, you've got that organic feel of the typeface. It's casual looking. It doesn't look too, you know, I want to say stuck up, but it doesn't look too affluent. Like it's, it's going to be too expensive, which was the key to this. It needs to look kind of affordable and homemade. And this has a nice homemade feel with the bakery uh, typeface as well as look at the dots around the oval. You know, they're not perfectly spaced and they're not aligned. So that to me, I, that, that actually works really well with this because if this, these were all aligned and spaced out, of course I would look good, but I like the fact that they're not, it's not perfect. So it has that handmade feel to it. So nicely done. And then she just kind of uh, rotated the sweet sensations just slightly enough so it's not um, horizontal just gives it a little bit of a dimension to it. Second option, very close to the first, which is fine. Uh, the only difference is she kind of um, made the dots a little thicker, bigger, and uh, obviously reversed it out and then placed a little tag uh, flag behind the bakery um, word here. So I have a nice option. The third one is definitely different than the first two kind of playing around with the icon and uh, tagline. So using the same typeface, just kind of pushing a little bit in a different direction. So great job, Anita. I really think that this, uh, you know, definitely shows that you're putting that, put, putting that process into place um, in, the, in it, you know, I think you came up with some effective solutions here. Uh, of course, you know, I gave all of the examples that you're going to see today, I'm giving um, even extra feedback too. So there, you know, it's a work in progress. And um, so it's not perfect yet. All right, this next one <clears throat> is Danielle's. And again, she's a student in your class. And this is a nice way of showing the thumbnails as well, just in a different way than Anita, but you know, nicely uh, organized numbered so we could talk about it if we need to you know say if i didn't think that her roughs were strong enough maybe there was a stronger one in her thumbnails i could say listen i think that n number 19 is stronger and you know so i could point that out um, but nicely done sketches here and then she goes into pulling out her strongest concepts and i think she did a great job with 
playing around with the icons and uh, the typefaces within here. Now there's definitely some things that she could push forward, but I think she did a great job with coming up with some three really interesting and unique uh, concepts. And I have one more example here that I pulled just very quickly. One second here. I just have thumbnail sketches though. I, for some reason, I don't have. Did I accidentally trash them? Hmm. Alicia, let me go grab hers real quick, guys. I think I accidentally trashed hers. Uh, her thumb or roughs. I have her thumbnails, but I don't have her roughs. So give me one second. I'll grab hers. It's nice to see them both together at least. Alicia. Did you guys have fun with this while I'm doing this? Uh, did you guys enjoy this particular uh, this particular project? Maybe it was challenging to you. Maybe the thumbnail process really did help you through. The thumbnails helped, good. Good to hear. All right, so this is Alicia's thumbnail pictures. And, you know, the only thing I would say in this, you know, maybe lighten this up a little bit. I did, I did not write that in Alicia's notes. So there you go, Alicia, there's a little bit more of a tip. You know, taking this into Photoshop, lightening up and darkening the lines a little bit, just for presentation purposes, you could probably crop out the thumb and everything, um, would probably be the best presentation. But great job with, you know, coming up with some interesting ideas here. At least I can see uh, that you are experimenting and playing around with some, uh, some concepts. And then these are her three roughs that she came up with, which I think the typeface and the imagery is great. There's just some issues with the overall shape. So some three really interesting options here. Um, I think one of the comments that I had made about this one, which might help you guys understand where I'm coming from in, in regards to some, maybe some of your feedback, I think that this works really nicely. I like the typeface being used here. I like the whole like um, kind of roughness bean, like almost like it's printed on a bag type look. Um, but the bean itself doesn't quite look like that. It looks very opposite. It's very clean lines. So coming up with something that maybe unifies a little bit better, you know, giving that style to the bean itself might de or will definitely unify it better and make it you know um just read a lot better together instead of sticking out so that's why this one works a little bit better in regards to that i'm not necessarily you know that's the shape of it it's not quite um you know there yet but i think that the typeface with that being the way that those two styles look together work really well so just a few things there. So great job for the most part. Lots of very strong projects. Like I said, I didn't pull everybody. So that doesn't mean if I didn't show yours that yours didn't work. It just means that I didn't get to it because I just pulled a whole bunch very quickly. So um, it's really nice to see what other people are working on because you can be inspired by your students that are their fellow students that are in your class. I know I like to see um, examples when I was in when I was in college, it's just nice to see where everybody is, and then you can align your, you know, your work with theirs. The ones that are definitely working, your quality of your work should be up there with theirs. You know, so it's kind of like they're inspiring you uh, with the quality of their work and pushing you as well. So you're getting inspired by them and saying, hey, you know, I want to I want to get to that point where that it's at that level too. And, and believe me, they're not quite, per, you know, everything still is a work in progress, so they're not perfect yet, but, you know, that's why we're, we're going through this process. All right, so let's take a look at your week three objectives in your discussion here, if you guys don't have any questions.
All right, so week three, um, learning objectives. Let me zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. This is what you'll be walking away from week three. Define three ways in which consumers attach emotion to brands and how it impacts company performance. You know, when they're talking about emotions to brands, you know, you think about things that you want. Uh, you know, if you're seeing somebody with a particular brand of car and you want to that you want to fit into that whole, you know, that I guess that whole <laughs> uh, lifestyle, of whatever that brand is is attached to. You know, that's emotional. That's the emotional part. Identify a specific set of compatible font families that reflect the individuality of a brand. So font families are great because they give you a lot of different styles within that family to use and uh, ones that are appropriate to the brand. Yeah, you know, is makes that brand even stronger. Type, typography can be the key to an effective logo mark. You know, it's definitely very, very important. Number three, define imagery that projects the personality of a brand and strengthens the personal and emotional relationship a brand shares with its intended audience. So it's almost like a mood board, you know, you're kind of getting that mood set. Number four, create a brand guide that establishes a company's voice, look, and identity. We'll be looking at that in a second here. Number five, analyze client feedback and adjust content to the brand strategy goals. You know, we're always kind of doing that. I'm giving you guys feedback and you guys are adjusting your logo marks. So you guys will be doing that as you push forward here with your brand book. Number six, discuss how it, uh, color influences end user behavior towards a company's brand. Color is huge. It's a huge design element. It's one of the design elements that you don't even need to have any words to go with. It just is what it is. You know, color has its own connotations, its own meaning. So that's pretty powerful. Um, and it can go either way. You can use it appropriately. You can use it inappropriately. So it's always good to kind of know color theory, uh, the appropriate colors to use so that you're not using it uh, inappropriately. All right, so this week you will begin the initial layout phase for your brand book that establishes brand guidelines giving your brand direction. Let's take a look at this video that uh, shows the success story behind the brand Adidas. the whole uh, symbolic part of the the Adidas logo so if you weren't aware of that that's kind of an interesting video to watch oh, it shows you kind of like the brief history of Adidas as well so it's definitely uh, a brand that is ingrained in our culture today in the sports um, industry and you know it works and it's effective so it's always nice to kind of get inspired by what works and what's effective pretty cool pretty cool all right let's take a look at your discussion and let me know if you have any questions as we're going through this. So we're going to be talking about brands and emotions. You know, look at this guy here hugging the car. Isn't that funny? You know, we probably have all been there at one point. Maybe it's a pair of pants, a brand pair of pants that you bought or a dress or shoes for, you know, whatever. Uh, cars, those, you know, brands that pull our emotions. 
go ahead and read through that background. And I'm gonna go right to the prompt here. We'll, we'll read this out loud. Let me get this a little bit bigger here. All right, so for this discussion, you will discuss ways in which consumers attach emotion to brands and explain how it impacts company performance. So for your initial post, you're gonna cho choose two questions to research and answer from the list below. So choose two out of the four here. So read through them all. Number one, do consumers make purchase, purchase, purchases based on brand emotion and loyalty or logic? Why? Number two, what is it that encourages the customer to stick with a product and why? Number three, what is the role of customer service and brand loyalty? Why? And number four, is social media necessary for brand recognition and loyalty? Why? So really, you know, I would definitely put your two cents in here and, and in your own words and experiences in here. I think this is what will really make your discussion interesting. You know, talk about the brands that you stay with, that you're loyal to. You know, you could even think about, you know, when I was, when I was reading these questions out loud, what popped into my head was um, a brand that I used because my mom used it. And I, I watched her use it throughout when I was a kid. And that, that was a cream that she uses on her face. She uses Olay uh, cream on her face. It just smells really good. And it brings back all these memories of, of her. Um, and I use it to this day. So I kind of grew up with that brand. You know, think about Campbell's Soup you know, as brands when you're a kid drinking Campbell's soup and, and maybe you, you still are eating it. Maybe you still eat that today because you have good memories about it. So it's not just about the brand and the logo. It's about experiences that you've had maybe growing up, you know, good and or bad um, that you, that kind of makes you either, you know, buy into it or not. And, and also not just about experience, not just about logo and brand, but also experiences in regards to customer service. You know, maybe you chose a brand, didn't think that you were going to, you know, you thought you were going to get something done customer service wise, but they were amazing at customer service. And then that made you kind of be loyal to them because the customer service was so good. Um, so think about those things, put your own words into this. I think when you put your own experiences in, uh, your own thoughts in regards to what you do and what you buy and why. I think this will be, you know, definitely a more interesting topic uh, to talk about and discuss and read about what other people are, you know, experiencing as well. So don't forget, you know, you can use research for your citation. You might you research articles that discuss why consumers choose to remain loyal to a particular brand. Uh, you can also find articles from experts who specialize in bu building brand loyalty. Challenge each other and don't forget, you know, the two APA citations. Post has to be at least 200 plus words, all that good stuff. Any questions in regards to this discussion? I think this will be a fun one for sure. I mean, I have a, a few ideas of brands that I am loyal to and have experiences with that I can talk about as well. So I'm sure you probably can think of stuff too. No questions, you guys are easy today. Oh, it's Monday. Everybody's slower on Monday, right? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so that is your discussion for week three. Go ahead and get that started for this week. All righty, let's do a quick five minute break here before I get started because I'm going to be talking for a while about your assignment three. I'm going to give a, a demo as well. Um, so let's take a quick five minute break, get you guys kind of waking up here, uh, and then I'll be back to discuss kind of what's involved in, in this project. Sound good? All right, see you guys back here in five minutes.
Okay, can you guys hear me? Sorry, it was a little longer break because I actually had a visitor come knock at my door here, so I apologize. Awesome, all right. So let's go forward here and take a look at your assignment three. Um, this assignment is gonna look a little overwhelming at first, but I think once we walk through it, I think you guys will be good to go. All right, so basically what we're going to be doing, you're gonna read through this background. It's gonna give you a little bit of an idea of what brand books are. We're gonna talk about that a little bit too in, in detail today in lecture. So you can go ahead and read this on your own free time. I'm gonna go right to the prompt here. So for this assignment, you will begin the initial layout phase for your brand book. A well-executed brand book provides a tremendous amount of insight into the brand. Consistency is key. Brand guidelines should be flexible enough allowing designers to be creative, but rigid enough to keep your brand clearly recognizable. So we're gonna be breaking this down into all of these sections here. And before I go through this in detail, because we're gonna, I'm gonna actually do a demo on this. Let's go back to the slides and talk more about what a brand book is, because I think sometimes, you know, it's a little, un, you might not be real sure of what a brand book is, so let's talk about this. All right. So what is a brand book? It can also be known as, you might hear it be called brand manual, style book, style guide. It pretty much is the same thing, brand book. Uh, so we're gonna talk about what it is, why we create a brand book, and we're gonna show examples of some brand books before we get into the, the actual demo here. So what is a brand book? Can anybody tell me what a brand book is? Maybe in your own words. Yep, tell us how the brand is used. So it's like rules, right? It's the guidelines. Perfect. Great job. So a, a brand book is a set of rules, regulations, in terms of how to use a corporate style. And why do you think we use it? To keep everything consistent, right? What happens if we have a logo and it looks great across all these advertisements and then one day it's it, the logo is given to some other designer and they they accidentally use it in in a wrong way they're showing it inappropriately what happens what do you think you know let's say if it's skewed out of proportion or maybe they're showing it in a color it's not supposed to be brand is no longer consistent and then what happens when it's not consistent and you see the logo in a different way it confuses the target audience yeah it becomes unrecognizable it just it's a disconnect it, it de almost like degrades the brand in a way brand recognition so you spend all that money you know clients will spend all that money on a beautiful logo it might be effective it, it's amazing logo and then once it gets passed on to other designers or other people who are accessing it to apply it to other means and purposes you know other applications and it's not done correctly it's actually degrading the brand because it's, it, you know, if it's not done consistently, it takes away from the brand recognition. So what is a brand book? Uh, development of a corporate style is also included. So you'll see in a brand book, a logo. You'll see the appropriate original logo that's supposed to be used, maybe inappropriate uses as well. You'll see corporate colors in there that you're supposed to use, fonts maybe forms, corporate price lists, business cards, stationery. There's a whole plethora of different things depending upon the brand that you're working on that might be included in the actual brand book. So one of the things that is most important is, you know, looking at the logo and its appropriate use, 
how it's supposed to be shown. You could have size requirements. I mean, you could have it down as detailed as Walmart does here. And this is Walmart's logo and how it should look in a particular title, maybe, um, maybe on top of a, you know, stationary or, you know, a receipt of some sort. And they're showing you an X height and an actual specific spaced X height that um, should be put into effect if you have, you know, this type of uh, um, usage in terms of the site service and title being listed here. Here's another example of a university logo that's showing you the proper way to use the logo and an improper way to use the logo. So that there's no confusion whatsoever. If somebody is applying this logo that's, that's you know, maybe they're applying it to a website or a stationary, you know, they, they know clearly how not to apply it and how it's supposed to be used if it's a vertical use or a horizontal. Here's another example of Firefox. Here's a Firefox logo, current use. You can see the little smiley face that's green. That's the one to use. All the other ones are not good uses of it. Maybe they're older. Maybe it's uh, inappropriate ways to flip it. So they're showing you those. That's another example of that. So, you know, every brand's different in what they're going to show in their misuse and usage page. Here's Skype. They actually break it down to the cloud shape. So it gets pretty specific. And notice how each of these pages, when I flip through these, look different in regards to their presentation. It all very is consistent with the brand itself. Okay, so keep that in mind too. So why create a brand book? We just talked about some of the reasons. Let's go into a little bit more detail here. You'll have an easy guide to refer to when handing over the project. So this is something if a client asks you and you, you have the opportunity, say you're designing a logo for a client and that's all they hired you to do. Either you're designing a new one or rebranding one. If, if you think that they have the option of, give, you know, have the money to have you create a brand book, this is something that you might want to offer for more, for, you know, more project work. You might say, hey, listen, you know, this is, do you have a brand book? Would you like a brand book? Explain why a brand book is good for their, you know, for their actual company. Some may be, you know, more for it than others. It depends on, you know, the budget and all of that. But it makes you look professional because so you can tell them, you know, why a brand book would be good for them. You know, it makes you look professional. They'll know, um, know that you did everything for a reason. There's a lot that can go into a brand book that explains not just about the logo usage, but about the actual brand itself. Um, also, you maintain control of the design. When someone does something awful, you can refer them to the document. You know, if you give this, if, if the project's given out to a designer and they misuse the logo and they were given the brand book, you know, that's kind of like, uh, you can kind of support your theory of like, hey, you know, we're not going to pay for this logo because you did it, do it the way that it should have been done. And this is the brand book that we showed you. So you can use that for support in that regards. You avoid cheapening the design and the message and branding. When you uh, have everything consistent, the brand is recognizable. If it's not consistent, it's cheapening the design, the message, and the branding. It forces you to define and hone your style, making for a more cohesive design. So as a designer, you can kind of see across the board, you know, how the logo can be applied to other instances and other applications and how you can maybe create a logo that's a little bit more cohesive and not just the logo, but like pieces that go with the logo that is more consistent. So let's take a look at some brand books. Some of these are examples that I did here. Um, this one is a brand book. I actually created this logo a few years ago actually many years ago, 2012, uh, for Barith Ministries. And so I redid their logo, rebranded, re and then I created this brand book. And this is the one I was telling you about that I, I just created it and then showed the lady that I was working with. She didn't ask for a brand book, but I said, hey, listen, you know, I, I redid your logo and I did this brand book and I, I would like for you to see it. 
And as soon as she saw it, she was amazed and wanted a, a lot more projects from me. So this could be definitely something that you could do uh, if you're you know, doing somebody's logo. So this is the cover of the brand book. And it's a brand book because it looks like a book. And as you flip through, and you don't have to have all of this in there. This is very detailed. Um, this talks about their brand, who they are, um, what their ministry is like. Almost like their mission in a way. And then it goes into the contents page. The contents page is nice because, you know, obviously you see there's 31 pages in this particular brand book. Some brand books are only two pages or one page. So it doesn't necessarily have to be this long. But um, contents page is great if you do have a lengthier um, book here. So this is Tracy. This is the woman that I met with. And she's uh, giving me her, the mission statement, vision, and the purpose of their brand. This is great to state at first because whoever is getting this brand book can actually read about well, who the brand's all about. So they're not confused in any way of how the brand should be portrayed. So it's almost like if you can make this as clear as possible to somebody, verbally and visually to them, not just verbally through the book itself, but the overall look of the book, it encompasses the brand, then you know, obviously you're gonna get a better result. This is their core value. So we even dug in a little bit deeper and talked about you know, what's important to them. Maybe what their um, niche is, I say niche, because there's so many ministries out there, but what makes them different? This is the brand mark. This is the actual final mark that's supposed to be used. And as you can see on the left-hand side here shows the actual example. Points out a couple of things. So you can see number one, you can see it being pointed out as the symbol is the little feather. The two, uh, word mark is number two. And then the tagline is shown on the very bottom. So this is the standard Mark Seal and logo type. On the right hand side, it kind of just explains in detail what all of these are. Um, and, 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 and just, you know, kind of points out different things there. Um, and then the next page, it shows the clear space and size requirements. So the clear space means you can't have anything around this logo in this particular bumper space, this X height. So type, whether it be type, imagery, you have to have this clear space. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be white, it just has to be spaced out in that way. The, the logo on the very bottom shows uh, the minimum you know, you, size of the logo and, and you cannot go, it's saying here, use logo type version no smaller than the minimum of 1.25 inches. So if it's being small, used smaller than that, that's a no-no. So you're setting out your rules. Um, and there's reasons behind that because once it gets to a certain, you know, scale, a smaller scale, it's not going to be readable. So you're going to have issues. On the right-hand side is um, just a way for me to allow whoever is using this PDF, you know, it's not just a book but a PDF, to download the, the specific logos for use. So I'm providing um, low res and high res, depending on what the usage is, the logo for print and web, so that you know, it's easy to access there. And this gets into the um, applications in which the logos use. So this actually does not exist and didn't exist when I first started this brand book. This is just what I was showing her, uh, how her business cards could look. Um, how I would do it. So this is where you could drum up some business. You know, if you uh, had the time that you could do a couple of these examples and showed the actual client and say, hey, listen, I could do a brand book for you and then show them these pages and then they might be like, oh, I really want this business card. It's not quite, you know, this is just a mock-up, so it's not real yet. And this is exactly what Tracy said when she looked at my brand book because these did not exist. And she said, I want, I want this business card. So here I am kind of showing the business card and how it would look if I were to do them and how it would be, the logo should be placed. I mean, even down to the specific size of the card, the die cut of the card, <coughs> excuse me, the die cut of the card, which are the rounded corners, the paper weight, the type of paper, the ink being used, resolution, file format, sides, typeface. I mean, very, very specific um, title, size, what it should be. So you're kind of giving those rules to 
to the actual person that's you know going to use the logo in such a way. Here's stationery. So again, just the same thing as the business card, just showing you it in a letterhead form, telling you all the specifics on the right, pointing it out on the left. Envelope. And again, these did never really existed. This is just something that I um, mocked up for her and she, she absolutely loved it and said, I need all of these pieces. Now, a brand book is specific to what is being shown here. So I wouldn't just, you know, just randomly pick out uh, pieces that, that I found. It would have to connect with your actual brand. So because this is a ministry, you know, obviously they're going to have some type of marketing kit that they want to pass out. And this is one I thought was really nice um, that could be used where they could pass it out to people who are interested in becoming part of the ministry. It's called a mini marketing kit. It's, it's kind of like a little envelope and they can slide in, you know, little single flyers in there. Um, and it's embossed on the front with a logo and that has their business card in there all ready to go. So obviously this might not be appropriate for other brands, but this definitely is something interesting for this particular brand. Here's a little kit here. The next thing um, to show is print and web advertisements. How would this look? What kind? What would? It, what would their ads look like? Um, maybe not adhere to this specifically, but you know you're showing an overall mood and an overall look, simplicity about this particular ad, um, and this is kind of what would be. Um, this would be inspired by different sizes here, depending on web and print. All right, um, standard communication through social media banners. So, you know, social media is a big part of us today. Uh, not just, you know, just people in general, but also designers. We can utilize this, uh, you know, showing the brand in, in this way as well. So Facebook, how it would look like in the Facebook world here and also Twitter. You know, they have Instagram and all that good stuff. Promotional materials. You know, if you have a brand that, you know, promotional materials like t-shirts are appropriate, you can show the brand on that, what it would look like. Maybe different, um, different, uh, different applications, you know, that would be a, um, appropriate for that brand. This, this is kind of like little pieces here that would be offered like coffee cups and umbrellas um, different pieces like this with the logo on it here are door hangers you know this is something that would be great for a smaller ministry that could go around and just place on some door, door hangers in, in neighborhoods that are local um, and then uh, just a contact page at the end which is great to have for a brand book because when you're giving this book over say to another designer if they have questions about what's in the brand book, say if they're not quite sure what's clear in there, what to do, they can call or contact the designer who actually created the brand book and or the actual person that is connected to that uh, company. So I have both contact information there. So that's just an example of a brand book that I did. Um, student examples, actually, you know what, I don't have, let me see if I have any student examples here. I thought I had them in the slides, but I guess I have to pull them. So give me one minute here. So, you know, this, the one that I just showed you is very extensive. You guys aren't gonna be doing that extensive um, in terms of that. Let me see, I actually have a, okay. Trying to see if I have, I do some examples here. Okay, so th this is an example of brand books that students did that I, this class has changed since I last taught this class. So the project changed, but really the whole idea um, of the brand book is the same. So you'll see a different um, brand but the book is pretty much what you guys will be doing, okay? So it's kind of good in a way so that you guys aren't jaded by past designs either. All right, so this is a student that I had, he did a great job on this book, you know, it was back in 2014, so it was a while ago. Um, 
brand standards book. They're showing the cover page and they're designing the, the actual book in the mood and the look of the brand. That's kind of what we want to see with your books, okay? So you can put brand standards on the front cover. You can put the name of the, you don't necessarily have to put the name of the company because you already have the logo on there, but at least have the logo shown on there. You can have the date, not necessarily the month, but maybe the date. And that way, you know, if you're current, you know, obviously if I were looking at this, I'd, I'd ask the people, the actual company, if they have a uh, more updated brand manual. If not, this would be the go-to. But this is a great cover. That is a good example of what you should do. Um, table of contents. So this person did table of contents. Notice how the imagery goes along with the look and the feel and the mood of the actual brand. So they're laying this out uh, as such. Has a nice little footer down below there. States that this is section one, table of contents. The next page is page two, and this is the introduction. This is just about who the company of the brand is. You can copy and paste what was given to you guys in that breakdown um, and kind of tailor it around your introduction if you'd like. Here's the logo usage page. Um, so not only are they visually showing you what you need to do and what not to do, but also explaining it verbally. So I think that is the clearest possible way that you can do it. If you were only to show visuals, you might get confused of what that visual is showing. So that's why having a verbal statement to it makes it as clear as possible. So on the left side there, you'll see number one is showing you like how, you know, don't go below this, uh, this, size here. This is the smallest you can have it. Number two is showing you the clear space around it. Number three is showing you what not to do. Number four is showing you when their screen printing involves um, kind of what the options can be. Section two, typography. This is what is what typography was used in the logo itself. So they're being very specific because there's two different ones here for Thrive and Coffee. And then it's telling you the primary typeface that cannot be changed or modified is, and they're telling you both typefaces. Both of these typefaces have been carefully picked to best represent the company. Replacing these fonts with alternatives should not be done. So it's telling you, you know, you need to stick with this. You need to keep it consistent. It's also going down below, it's telling you what the headers and body copy should be if, if used, you know, for collateral pieces. So we can keep it all consistent. Color scheme. You know, every single color in your logo needs to be pointed out in PMS, CMYK, RGB, and hex number. I think for yours, it just might be PMS, CMYK, and RGB. These are the, what makes up that color. Um, this is because, if, you know, you might want to use the logo, uh, say in print, and you'll need to know those numbers for CMYK. If you use it for the web, you'll use RGB. And if it has a Pantone color possibility of usage, which is a premixed ink, that's the, the, um, the numbers there for the Pantone swatches for each one of those. Color scheme. Okay, it says the following complimentary colors are suggested to be used in addition to the Thrive Coffee Company logo and promotional and office projects. RGB, or red, green, blue, orange. So those are the colors that they would like for you to use if used in promotional or office projects. Here is the logo on different promotional items. This is always fun to do. You can find some really cool PSD mock-up templates to put your logo on, and this is what this particular student is doing that are free. It just makes for a nice presentation. And then at the very end is the contact information, the design company, so you can put your, your company name or just a fake name if you want, your actual designer name, your phone number, email, web address, any other social media contact information. So that's an example of what a, a student has done that I think is very successful. Let me see if I can find another one just for comparison here. OK, 
Okay, here's just a simple one. All right, this one's simple in regards to the presentation. You don't have to have too much going on either. You know, you want the information to be easy to read. You don't want the aesthetics of the book to get in the way of the information. So just kind of keep that in mind. Talks about our brand after the cover page. The cover page just has the logo, branding guide, very simple. The next page is just talking about the brand. And again, this is the description probably that you were given. It could be placed in here. Proper logo usage. So this is showing you what the logo should look like in color and in black and white, and then also what it should look like on a dark color. So this is a great way to show um, the versatility of your logo. And if you need to change something, you'll know once you, you try this out. Improper logo usage. It says, please do not distort or stretch the logo. It has the big red X in there. So it has verbal and visual. Um, rules here. You can show more than two. You know, I would say at least have three different examples, maybe four would be great. Um, you can show, you know, colors that shouldn't be used, typefaces changing that shouldn't happen. Those are some examples. Here are the color breakdowns of the two colors used in the logo. RGB, CMYK, PMS. Fonts. And that's it. So that's a little bit more of a simple, simple book to show you. Let me show you one more just for. Different look about this. Okay, so this is um, another student did Thrive Coffee. This is the cover. Table of contents, very simple. And each of these are totally different in how they look. Overview brand logo. This is how the primary logo should look like and the explaining on the right. Acceptable, acceptable variations on the top and unacceptable. Look how this is nicely laid out. There's a grid structure going on here that's consistent. It's not all just slapped on the page. It's aligned. There's, there's space in between each section. So it's visual. There's a visual pause in between. It's very clear and understandable to read and to follow. And that's our role as designers. We need to kind of organize this information so that's easy to read and easy to follow. Typeface. Application, so signage, uh, other promotional materials. Contact information. So, you know, that's nice to see because at least you get to understand, you know, what has been done and, you know, be inspired by what you see so that when you, you know, kind of know what to do going forward here. Any questions about that? Okay, so you can see the simplicity of those compared to the one that I did. That's why I wanted to show that to you. Because um, I don't want to freak you guys out with like, oh, I have to do all of that. <laughs> so I wanted to show you some student examples. Okay. And again, the, the student examples that I showed you are different um, in regards to the overall um, brands that you're choosing from. Okay, so I'm going to go back to your assignment details here, and we'll kind of go through this. Let me get my chat area up here. Okay. So basically what you're going to be doing is using an InDesign, uh, using InDesign to create a new document. You're going to do a 12-page or a 16-page um, book here, 8.5 by 11. And what it should include is the cover. We, should, we saw some covers today in the examples, table of contents. You want to make sure that the essential information is easy to find. Brand introduction. So I showed you some table of contents examples. Brand introduction, introduce your brand to the world. A simple introduction will give people insight into the heart and soul of the company. Don't forget to do a spell check. I actually had one student in here misspell the name in the logo, which is, you guys have to make sure that, that doesn't happen. If you show a client 
a logo that misspells their name, that, that's a big fail. So just kind of make sure you're paying attention to that. Target audience, describe who your target audience is. So each of these could be different pages, or should be. How does your product or service solve their problems? Personality, make a list of five adjectives your brand is not and five adjectives your brand is, for example. Color palette, defining a color palette will go a long way towards creating a consistent look and feel of your brand. Each color should be listed with its name. So CMYK, RGB, and hex equivalents. Logo guidelines, in your brand, brand book, you can dictate exactly how the logo is used. So you should have a section for that typography section. So choose typography that reflects the individuality of the brand. Tell the story of the typefaces you have selected and how each relates to the brand. How is each one used for headlines, subheadlines, and body copy? Imagery is another section. Outline the type of imagery that is accept acceptable and should be avoided for use in all advertising and marketing materials and then advertising and marketing treatments. So de depict your logo being used in two different types of advertising and marketing treatments found in week three's reading and video course media page. Any questions about that? Um, Pantone color is not stated in there, is it? No, yeah, you could probably leave that out. Yep, good question. Any other questions? I'm gonna kind of start this here in a second. Okay. All right, so let's set up the 12 page or 16 page, kind of depend on how you want to do it. Eight and a half by 11 in InDesign here. So let me go. Give me one second here. Open up InDesign. So eight and a half by 11. I'm just going to custom. I'm going to check off facing pages. That's really not needed. And I'm just going to start out with 12 pages for now. All right. So it kind of looks like this. My 12 pages here. All right. Now the first thing that I need to do is a cover page. So I want to make sure that I'm picking out the logo that I think works best for this particular project. So go back and, and listen to my feedback or read my feedback from uh, last week and adjust your logo accordingly or choose the one that you think you wanna go through. I know some people had a couple good ones that I said, you know, you can try to experiment with and then choose the one that you wanna go with. Either way, you're gonna to have to choose a concept. So I'm gonna go back to Illustrator. Remember the examples I showed you last week in my demo, I, I did these three, these three options here. Very quickly. So I'm gonna choose the one that I think is best. And, and at this point, this is where you should be playing around with color. So go back to the logo that you want to do and then choose the colors that you think is appropriate for this. Um, so you might you know, want to see, swatch libraries. Um, I'm just going to go to Suites here for my color options. And, oops, what are you doing? Choose something that I think is appropriate for, for my brand here. 
This purple is kind of nice. Do like a lighter purple. Okay, so I have two different purples here. At this point, I would definitely, once you have uh, your colors set, double click in Illustrator into your fill once you select that. And then take a screenshot of this information. This is breaking it down in RGB numbers. This is what RGB is, so 86 for red, 82 for green, 163 for B. That's what makes up this color here. CMYK. Same thing shown right here for this particular color. Hex number is right here. That's your, your, your web number. Okay, so I would take a screenshot. So Command Shift 4, I can take a screenshot of this purple color. And then go and choose your other color, do the same thing. That way, when you're ready to do the color page, you have all of this information to go off of. The next thing is I'm going to save this out, just the third artboard here. So I'm going to do File, Save As when I'm ready to go. And I'm going to name this Final Logo. And you can delete the other two um, artboards at this point. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to save this first. And then I'm going to go to Artboards. And I'm just going to delete the first two. Let me get rid of these. So I don't need them anymore. You might have to delete the actual work there. Okay. I'm going to make this a little bigger too because I think that might be better for placement purposes. I'm going to save it. The other thing I want to do, I want to rasterize this. Hold on one second. A second, let me do it here. Hold on. Okay, uh, I'll just leave it as is. Just save it. Okay, the next thing I want to do is export as a ping file. And the reason why I want you guys to export it as a ping file is because you can import your logo without having a white block behind it. So once you get the artboards deleted out of there, you only have one artboard to, to worry about, just save it as a ping. Save this resolution as a high resolution, so high pixels per inch. And then very important, make sure this says transparent. Click OK. All right, once you're done, you're ready to go into InDesign and start your book, book uh, pages here. So it's really up to you on how you want to do the cover. Actually, you know, before I even do this, let me go back to my Illustrator. I'm going to show you one more thing. I'm going to save this as Final Logo White because I'm going to do a white variation of this. So if I were to do a darker background, actually this might not be too bad on a darker background either. But just an example, like say if I had, you know, say if it was just the name here. So let me delete this and I'll show you in a second. Where's my colors? And yours might be like this too. So I want to show this. Where's my colors here? I guess I didn't save it into my my color block here. Hold on. Okay. Say it was like this, but I wanted to put it on a dark background. And actually it is light. Then I'm gonna to wanna to make this white and save this out as a white variation ping. Now you're not gonna see it, it's there, but you're gonna save it as a white variation as a ping file. 
and you'll just name it white, hit export. And the reason being is because if you were to use a darker background, say you use like a black, you want it to be able to be um, visible. So you have a white version of it. Okay, in my case, I don't think I, I'm going to have that problem because mine has a lighter background behind it and it's a seal logo. So if I were to go in here, like for example, let me go to the rectangle frame tool. Let me place that logo in that I saved in my ping logo in here. Okay. I'm going to take my eyedropper tool here in the toolbar and I'm just going to select those colors in here and add it to my swatches. So hold on one second. Zoom in here. Double click on the fill, add RGB swatch, and I'm good. Now, I have this zoomed in pretty tight here. Um, give me one second. Actual size. This looks pretty pixelated. And I'm not sure why. Give me one second here. Let me make sure I have the actual document set up correctly here. Yep. And I know you can't see what I'm doing, so just bear with me here. I'm trying to save this out as a high res image here. Click OK. All right, let's try this again. Oh, you know what? It's not linking, that's why. Okay. That's really weird. It's still kind of showing a little bit more pixelation here. Okay, let me save this and close back out. Minute three. Something must, weird must be going on here. I don't know why this is looking pixelated. Okay. I think this is why. All right, so if you ever wanna check on this, go to your links in InDesign and actually click, this is the link to my logo. It's gonna give you a breakdown in the links about this actual image here if you click on it. Down here, it's telling me that my logo is RGB and my actual pixel sprint is 72 dots per inch, which I don't want it to be 72. And what's really weird about this is I saved it out in Illustrator, and I don't know if you guys saw me do it, as 300 pixels per inch. So just let me take a look here at what's going on. This might be it. So I went to File Documents. This is if you run into the same issue, Document Setup. This should be High Resolution Preset. Let's try this again. I'm going to export this out. This is an Illustrator. Replace. I want to change this to 300. Everything else looks good. Click OK. Go back into InDesign. Hopefully, this will solve it. Let's see. Nope. Still looks pixelated. All right, this is really interesting. I've never had this issue before. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Let me see if maybe my document in here is not set up right. Go to preferences.
Everything else looks good. Really, really weird. Okay, let's go back and check to see if it still says 72. Yep, 72. So something is going on with my Illustrator for help. Let me, let me try to copy this. I'm gonna do another completely new document in Illustrator here. Just give me one second. Okay, it's 300 pixels per. Give me one minute here. Okay, so what I'm doing, and I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, I just went and created a completely new document in Illustrator. Now I'm going to paste in my logo. And this time I'm going to, I'm going to outline this font because maybe it's a font issue. So I'm going to go up to type and I'm going to uh, say create outlines. And what that does is that create, I can't go in here and change the type. If I were to take my type tool and change it, it goes from it being a typeface to a shape. But what's nice about that is, you know, you won't have any problems with it like I might be having um, with exporting this out. So I'm gonna go export out again. Final logo new, I'm gonna name this ping. Everything else is the same. 300 pixels per inch, transparent, click OK. And let's see if I have any issues now. It might have been a, a font issue here. So you can see this one looks pixelated. See how it looks, you know, almost like you can see the pixels in it. Let's see if this changes once I did that. Hopefully. No, it didn't. Jeez. Okay, let me see here. View, how big is it in here? 100%. I'm checking this percentage up here. It looks good. So this is kind of like a mystery, you guys. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. And it's still saying 72 pixels per inch down here. Very, very interesting. And everything else is high. So yeah, there's something going on and I'm not quite sure. I thought that would fix it. Uh, but there is something going on here that I need to figure out. So let me dig a little deeper in the meantime. I don't wanna take up too much time with this, but you're, you should be good with yours. It shouldn't happen like this. Um, but again, I have to figure out why this isn't saving out as pic, uh, 300 pixels per inch when I'm telling it to. Um, it's saving it as a low res and I can tell because right here in my links, it's telling me the actual pixels per inch is 72 and I, I obviously am not saving it out as that. So I don't know if there's something wonky going on with my Illustrator. Um, just make sure you're, you're saving it out as 300 and you shouldn't have a problem with that. Sorry guys, to figure out what the heck's going on with that. All right, so I'm gonna center this and the one thing I was gonna show you is I'm gonna take a, a rectangle here you don't necessarily have to use a white background. You can use a different color background. You know, just kind of have fun with it. See what you can do. Oops, sorry. Send it back. Um, you know, kind of play around with it. You can even use black. You know, if that calls for it. Either way, get your logo on there somehow. It doesn't have to be really, really big. Brand guidelines, I'm gonna name this. And I would set this in a typeface that you're going to be using, and I spelled that wrong, I couldn't see it, in your actual logo. So if you have a readable typeface, like for instance, it would be my, my tagline, which is, What fun is that? Let me go back to my character palette here. Minion, I would change this to Minion, which is already changed into Minion. I'm gonna set this to be like 18 point type and I'm gonna put a little um, bullet point, which is option eight. I'm gonna put 2018 and then you can put the, your class name if you want with your name, it's fine. 
You can do this in so many different ways, but. And then place this anywhere you think would be good balance wise with this. Just make sure everything's kind of aligned. Mine's centered here. So that's my cover page. Any questions about that? Other than the logo not looking very sharp there. Okay. The next, um, the next thing is table of contents. So what you might want to do at this point is set up your set up your page numbers. And in InDesign, a good way to do that is using your master pages, right? If you never used master pages before, this is a different, this is gonna be a little different for you, but hopefully you have. We'll see. So bring up your pages. And you're gonna create a master page. So you're gonna click on a master page. And whatever is indicated in your actual pages, see how there's a letter A in there? That's how that's what you're gonna affect. So for example, right now I just double clicked on a master. So this is my master page. If I were, and I'll show you an example, if I were to do say a just a real quick example here, a purple circle, and I wanted this circle to appear on every single page, I would do it on the master page, which I just did. And then when I click onto my actual pages, you'll see that circle being applied. Double click on it to, to, uh, to make it, uh, you know, kind of edit it. And you can see it editing on all the other pages. Okay, so page numbers are different because um, you have to utilize this in a different way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this like a little circle down here. You can use yours differently. I'm gonna center it. And if you put a page number in here, take the type tool, and I'm gonna start with page two. Make it bold, condensed, white for me. So set the style, what it's supposed to look like. Let's do it centered. Get it in your here, thing here. The only thing is we don't want to put number two in there. We want to do a special number. So I'm going to delete that right now. I'm going to keep my type tool there and I'm going to go up to type on my uh, menu bar in InDesign. And I'm going to go down to insert special character. And I'm going to go to mm, markers. And I'm going to choose current, yes, Michael, current page number. And it's gonna give you the letter A. And this is where you can also change the type here once that's in there. But what you'll want to see is the letter A. This is the symbol of what your page number will be once you kind of get into your pages. So this is a master page. You should see the letter A there, special character. And then once you go back into your actual pages, they're gonna be numbers. See how they change right there? They're going to be automatically numbered based on your number of pages. Thomas, you had a question? Yes. Um, I know I'm familiar with master pages. Are you wanting them in a single in a single form like that, or do you want them side by side? I think for this particular brand book, just have them vertically. You mean facing pages not turned on. Okay, so you don't want facing pages turned on? Yeah, so just if they, if they were turned on, this is what it would look like. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. You don't want it looking like that? I don't think so. I think it'll be easier if you keep it just vertical for this particular project. Okay. I mean, it's, I wouldn't dock you points if you did it. I just think it, it's a little easier for this particular project to do it like oh. per page. Okay. Yep. Good question, though, for sure. All right. So this will be the table contents page. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically, and you could do this in your master pages too. You're going to set up um, something that's consistent on every page. So double click on your master page again. 
and say there's an element that you want to keep consistent on every page. And just for this purpose, I'm going to do real quick here. I'm just going to do a, a top page header, the same color. I can grab this color. Oops. Get my colors. You know, maybe I do it a darker purple this time. And then maybe I do like a lighter purple behind it. And, you know, maybe I want to keep it consistent with the overall look of the seal. Maybe these become round instead of square. So start thinking about how you can unify that a little bit better. So I'm just making these round instead of square because that's part of the logo and I want to keep it consistent. It's a little bit smaller here. Hold on. All right, so let's say that I like this. This is a good header for every page of my book. Uh, now I'm going to take the type tool. Actually, I won't take the type tool. I'm just going to save this. And go to pages and you'll see it implemented on all my pages. Let me show you the preview so it's a little bit what of actually what it looks like here with it chopped. Okay, there's my pages. So now I can actually go into to and, and start creating my um, sorry, I had this my um, titles, so my subtitles. So for this one, it'd be table of contents. And then you can, you know, obviously set up um, character style sheets for this as well to keep it consistent, the typeface. So for instance, and I'll show you that in a second here, table of contents, I want this white. And I want this to be like 18 point type and I want it to be centered. And I want it to be bold, bold condensed maybe. And I want it to be around, yeah, I'm in the center of my area here, table of contents. Okay, when I'm ready to say it, that is what I want. This is what I want every header to look like, my header of every page. Now I can go into my styles Go up to window, go to styles, and choose paragraph styles. Paragraph styles because it's more than one word. You could do a character style, but I think paragraph style will probably be best for this one. Now, when you get your paragraph style panel ready, there's going to be a, a one that's already set. They're called the basic paragraph. Just ignore that. You want to do a new one. So we're going to do, you can do it two ways. You can say create new style right next to the trash can, hit that, or you can do the fly away and say new paragraph style. When that kind of pops up, you're going to name this. So I would put header for this one. You can um, go and change the, the font family if you want. Mine's already set because I already did it before I started, but this is where you would change that. You can change the color indent spacing, you know, if you wanted the alignment to be centered, this is where you would change it. Mine's centered now. Where's the color? I'll show you guys, character color. You know, you can change the color here, whatever you wanna do. And then once you're done, and everything's set, click okay. And then you're gonna go back to the paragraph style box and choose header. And that's gonna set it as a header um, paragraph style. So then any other page after this, you wanna apply that same uh, look to it. So brand introduction would be the next title. So we're going to go to the next page. The only thing you have to worry about is where this actually lands. So brand introduction, I'm just going to type that. Select that word, those two words, go back to your style sheets and go to header and it's going to set it exactly how you have it up here. The only difference I see here is this is all caps. This is in all caps. So we need to change that. Double click on your header to, to edit your um, to edit your settings here. 
and all caps should be under, give me one second here. Did I pass it? Position. Give me one second, line the grid, that looks good. Rules, is there an option here? Let's see. Drop caps. No, it's not drop caps. Hmm. I don't know if there's an option for caps. I thought there was. If you guys see it, stop me here. Very interesting. I guess it doesn't keep that option here. Open type features. Where do you see that at? Oh. Yeah, I think this is for more of like open type, meaning like fonts that are open type. Okay, what I think maybe that would be is um, a character style actually. So maybe in this case, because it is all caps, I would do a character style instead of a paragraph style. So that is under the same thing. You would go under window and let's see, I don't know, it might not be. And instead of choosing paragraph style, you would choose um, character style. Character style is basically, if you were to just want to emphasize maybe a word or two, because it doesn't have as many options. Let's see if it actually has the uh, options for, for all cups. Ah, right here. So it's under case, all caps. Let me see if paragraph style has the same thing. And I just missed it. Yep, oh, right here. So you don't have to do a character style. So all caps. I just missed it. I, I didn't see that, <clears throat> that word right there. So click OK. Now I don't necessarily have to do a character style now. All right, so that should have changed it right away right there, yep. The only thing I would need to know is where this actually lands, you know, between the top and the bottom part. So how you would identify is that it select this type uh, box, and I'm gonna use my arrow keys, but take a look at the X and Y coordinates on the upper, right hand, uh, upper left hand corner up here. So it says X and Y, it says, 0 0.5 inches by 1.3211 inch. When I hit the down arrow, that number on the Y goes down or up. If I hit up, it goes, you know, and it gets smaller. You can't see it? Okay, hold on. I'm sure my desktop. So when I select it, see the X and Y coordinates up here? Okay, so watch when I, I I'm just gonna select that type box and I'm gonna hit the up arrow and watch how that changes that number. So that's how I know that positioning of this type box. So let's say I wanna keep it at point, 0 0.5 by 1.46. I go to the second page or the third page, select that same type box and I just type it in. 0 0.5 is fine, one point, what was it, four or five? I can't remember, let's see, four, six. So I type in 1.46, and then it puts it on the same baseline exactly how this is. Okay, the next one, we just did brand recognition, target audience would be the next one. So now, I go to my paragraph styles and I choose header, it should do it perfectly. And I just have to position it here. 
0 0.5 by 1.46. It goes right into that position. And you'll notice that when you flip through each page in your PDF, that won't shift around. It'll stay the same position. If you didn't, it might jump around. Target audience personality. So I'm just basically, you know, putting in here what each page would be. Lots of pages here. Color palette. I'm just going to copy this. Go back into here. Take the type tool. So it kind of saves you time when you set up your paragraph style. Once you have it in there. Color palette. Go back. Uh, logo guidelines. Copy paste, and then you get quicker at it as you go. That's page seven. Typography is next, imagery and advertising. Let's just paste these in. Imagery. And advertising and marketing treatments. You could put a contact page oh, in the back if you want. It's completely up to you. I know there's a lot of pages in here, so you don't necessarily have to. I'm just going to go back and make sure I just implement this to be all the same consistent titling here. Oops. I just undid that, sorry. A lot of like monotonous work here, but kind of gets you in the swing of practicing in InDesign too. Can't that be sent in header style somewhere? Yeah, probably for sure, header style. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the actual uh, style guide or style style guide yeah yeah so you could definitely do like one step there but I just kind of was showing you for purposes of just getting that explained in each step here so this is what each page would look like and I think let me scroll down here we have two pages that don't have titles on it. So maybe this page would be contact us, or you can utilize a couple more pages for different things if you needed like more space. You know, for instance, you know, table, maybe not table contents, but say target audience needed another page. You could have two target audience pages. Okay, at this point, and then just pick a grid structure, kind of what you're gonna do how you're going to follow along this grid structure on every page so you know you're following a grid so for example maybe not for the table contents but we'll start say on the target audience so maybe in this instance what we'll do is we'll draw a guide down here about there's my guide down to five inches my guys aren't being shown here. Oh, it's because I'm not on this page. Hold on. There we go. You, where's my guides? Oh, you're talking about the positioning of those. Okay, now I get what you're saying. I was a little, I was a little confused there. Okay, so I'm going to pull down a guide at five inches, and I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be implemented. This is going to be, and you don't have to do a photo, but I'm going to utilize this for a photo. So I'm going to put like a photo up above here, and I'm going to send it to the back. 
and maybe the photo, I go to pixabay.com, has to do with the brand. So, you know, obviously we're talking about the bakery, right? So let's do bakery. And this is about typography, but you know, maybe we can choose some, some good old bakery images here. Make you hungry. Let's do cupcakes. And like I said, you don't have to use, I'm going to do a, um, you don't have to use photos. This is just something I decided to show you real quick here. Let's download this. I just downloaded a very um, low res image here, so it might not be super clear right now, but just for ease of getting this in here. Check, send it out. Okay, so now this is the issue with, okay, so this is another issue with um, styles. If you have your, your master page set up, so that it has an element like this, it's always gonna be on the kind of, it's always gonna be on the front. I don't think you can send this to the back. So with that being said, what you can do is you can do each master page different. Now this is a little bit more work because you're gonna do each of these separately if you put a different photo in here. But just for ease of showing you very quickly, we go back down to five. You would have to, if you wanted to change out these photos to be different on every page is what I'm, I'm referring to, you would have to do a separate style sheet for each. Or else it's gonna show the same photo. You might wanna show the same photo, it's completely up to you, but that's kind of how you would do it so that it's not, so you're not having the issue of what I just showed there with it being in the front. Now what the heck? Where's my pages? I'm having some issues with some of my some of my things going on here. Hold on. Let me close out of here and then open back up. I think I'm doing too many things at one time here and it's getting screwed up. Really? One moment, please. I'm gonna reboot this. My pages disappeared. Something is weird with this. I'm not getting my pages back here for some reason. Alrighty, interesting. There's some weird things going on today with this. But anyway, you're supposed to go back to your pages and they're supposed to be shown in here so you can see them kind of being applied to all the pages. For some reason, I can only see my, oh, there we go. My viewing options weren't there. Sorry about that, guys. We're gonna make this. If you don't want this uh, option to be applied, say to the cover, just go ahead and drag and drop the none over top of that thumbnail so that it's not applied to that. Sorry, guys, I've, it's been a day, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, let me go to preview and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So it'll be applied to every page. If you wanted that photo to change on every page, you would have to create a separate style guide for that. 
And that's only because I have an element that's going over top. All right, so with that being said, if I chose this as my grid structure, table of contents, branch introduction, now I can set my type you know, in there as well and I keep it consistent. So I'm gonna take, take my type tool and you can do your guides at this point. You can pull these out, you know, measure out some guides. I'm gonna kind of measure mine out so that I'm keeping this consistent where I'm um, pulling the, the type box out to these two guidelines. So I'm not utilizing the whole, I'm giving it nice white space in between here. And then just for ease of showing you very quickly how this would look, I'm just gonna put filler type in here. You can do a style sheet for this again. And the body copy, I would stay in between 10 and 11 point size. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be large. And then maybe a 14 point letting, that's always a good combination right there. Put some paragraphs in here. This is table of contents, so this will look a little different, but for example, and I could I could set these on my style guides too. I just I'm being a little lazy here. This would be more so of the brand introduction. Our table of contents, you might utilize the tabs. So for instance. So you would put like, um, well, you wouldn't put the table of contents, but you would start with brand introduction, target audience. So you would just skip the cover and the table of contents personality, color palette. and so on and so forth. Let me bring up this color palette, logo guidelines, typography. So every page that you have here, imagery, advertising, and treatments needs to be shown in here. And then you can make these a little bit bigger if you want, let's say 12 and give it more letting space in between. So this is about 12 points by in 30 letting. You can also give it a, a color. So if you wanted to have a similar color, we keep it with the brand color. And then select all, go up to type, and this is how you would do tabs, choose tabs. And once you choose tabs, it's gonna give you this ruler um, I want my, my page number to be on the right, right justified. So I want to choose the right justified tab. It looks like a right arrow. And I'm going to drag it right on the line here so it matches right up to my guide. And that's all you have to do. It's right on there. So I'm going to hit the little red button when I'm done. I'm going to put my cursor right next to the brand introduction. And I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard. And brand introduction starts on page three for me. So I'm going to put three. Target audience would be four. And I'm just hitting tab, it's going, oops, this would be five, six, and so on and so forth. Seven, eight, nine, and just for that. You can make these larger too in point size. Just make sure it's consistent. And keep the other, keep the typeface on the left the same, just have the type size of the font a little bit different, of the number different. There's different ways you can do the, you know, this. You don't have to do it like how I'm doing it. Just giving you some tips and tricks and ideas. So that's kind of what that looks like here. Okay. You can even set this in a different color. You know, it's completely up to you on how you want to do that.
You don't have to do the right justified. You could have the number underneath centered. It's completely up to you. Introduction. This is, you know, kind of the information that you can uh, set in here that was given to you in that PDF. You can copy and paste it and kind of make sure it reads well for that area. Same with the target audience. You know, it, it might be part of the paragraph that you're splitting up that was given to you, something that maybe you made up. It's a little different for you guys because this is a made up project. So you can kind of add your own stuff in here. Now, if this is a real client, you know, it'd be a different story to have that information, but obviously. If you want to have this broken into two columns, this is how you would do it, you guys, in InDesign if you're not sure how to do that. This is one column, meaning it starts from the left and ends to the right. Go up to Type and choose, where is it here? I always forget where this is at. It may not be under Type. Okay, it's under Object. This is why I get confused. I always think it's under Type. So go up to Object and choose Text Frame Options. And then see where it says number of columns. You'll just change this to two and hit preview. You'll see it changing to two. That's how you get two columns. Okay, so that's the target audience. You could have the target audience uh, placed in there. I'm just going to copy and paste this in here. Just make sure that you know you're, this is landing on the same baseline. Again, check your X and Y coordinates. You can even copy this bottom number so that this is the same all the way across. Okay, personality, what else? Color palette. So color palette, you can do, let's see. You know, you can show it in swatches like this. Oops. Okay, and remember that screenshot that I showed you guys to do? Go access that again, I'm gonna save this here. Those screenshots that I showed you guys, let me grab that real quick. over to the side. These are the two screenshots that I oh, told you to do. So at this point, you'll be able to know like what these colors are and, and be able to implement this. Sorry guys, I keep, I keep just hitting the wrong button there. Make us a little skinnier so I can put these numbers in very easily here. Okay, so for this darker number, for instance, this is the darker option here, darker purple. I'm gonna go and um, just do a type box and type in the numbers uh, here. So I would do CMYK first. So you could either do it like this, where you're actually typing out the CMYK, or you could do vertical. Completely up to you and how you wanna do it. So I'm gonna do 78. The thing with, with um, CMYK and all these numbers, you don't have to put the percentages in. People know, you know, by the lineup of the numbers, what is what, you know, next to each other like that. So you don't necessarily have to do the percentage. 82, 163. And then you could just do a pound, five, six, five, two, A, three. You can make this a little bit larger point size. You can, you know, utilize that color for that particular information if it works, if it's readable, and then have that information. You know, you can even center this information if it works. but just make sure it's with the swatch and you have a nice visual pause in between. If you don't, it could be confused. Um, it could be confused with the other colors possibly. I think there's a space in here, hold on. Nope, we're good. 
I don't think these are lined up right there. We go. So what I mean by that is I would pull this up, pull this closer in with that information. Same with this. So you have more space in between these two. And the same amount of space as the other one. So just keep the consistency there. And then, okay, so this was the darker. So I wanna do the lighter is, I need to change this information. So it'd be 41, oops. 41, 50, zero, and zero. RGB would be 155, 133, 190, and then the number for the web color would be 9B85BE. So that's why it comes in handy when you have those screenshots, or if you just write it down. It's completely up to you on how you want to do that. Oops. Pull this up just a little bit. Okay, and balance everything out, make sure it looks good, reads really clearly. And then you just go forward with your, your logo guidelines, kind of the examples I showed you um, with the student examples. Let me see here. So you would show the logo, guide, the logo as the original logo, maybe what it looks like with a dark background logo guidelines and then maybe what it look maybe what you can't do to it so maybe this one is two pages maybe the first page is the primary logo how it should look like color black and white and then maybe with a dark background and then the next page which so you would just duplicate the logo guidelines as a second page um, and that's easily done you just slide this over so you have two pages just have to select that um, again and type that in. The next page would be what to do what, with the logo, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. So that's logo guidelines. I'm kind of running out of time here. Oh, so give me one second. Um, typography. So whatever typeface that was used in your logo, let's see the typography page here, you're gonna point out the typeface name And it could be as simple as that. You don't have to go into detail of point size or anything like that. It's completely up to you. If you want to do the logo with typefaces being used and then also show like what typeface would be used for, say, stationary, you could do that as well. Okay, so that's typography. Imagery, this would be any images that you think would be good with your brand. So setting a mood. So you could go to pixabay.com and shoot, look, look at some bakery photos, like for instance, this one. And then you can place in all these photos, say all these circles would be photos that would show that. And you can do, you can do that very easily with the circle option, circle frame option instead of a rectangle frame option in InDesign. So you're keeping that consistency of the look of the, of the brand book because you're using those circles like you did in the swatches only these would be images. So you would use this ellipse frame tool. Let me show you real quick how I would do that. Oops. It would be the one with a little X in it. Now let me just place in that photo, the cupcakes, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So instead of like these color ones representing the photo, you would actually have photos in here. So you would show photos of anything that you think would be what you would like to show the brand, maybe in a website, you would have photos that would represent that you're setting a mood um, basically for the overall look of the pieces that could be designed or are designed. Okay, where's my alignment here? Make sure these are all aligned. Okay. 
And then just pay attention to how you present this. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Make, every, make sure everything's kind of aligned and centered if it, you know, based on your structure of your grid. Advertising and marketing treatments. This would be, you know, if you wanted to use the PSD mock-up templates to place it, or if you just have a mock-up that you want to place your, you know, just an illustration mock-up that you want to place your logo on, you can definitely do that. This one's showing different applications, signage, bag, umbrella, coffee cup. So anything relatable to this. So this could be kind of like boxes that the pastries would go in, maybe signage on the on tabletops or even t-shirts, you know, could be shown here. And again, you can utilize the same whole like circle deal where you're showing the pictures. I would keep it consistent. So this would be more of, you know, t-shirts and cups and boxes with the logo on it. Um, the next couple pages, you could put a contact page if you want. These might be utilized up within your other pages, depending on how you want to treat that. But that's basically it. So once you're done, we go back to the details here. You're going to save it out as a PDF for grading. So you're going to go. Probably smallest files, fine. Export. We're good. We're good. Hide all my stuff here. And then just open up the PDF just to make sure it's reading right. Everything looks good. You know, nothing's pixelated. Here's the cover. Table of contents, brand information. Yeah, I wouldn't start, don't put a page number on the cover. Don't put a page number of, uh, well, you can put a page number here, but I wouldn't put the actual table of contents in your table of contents. I would start with your brand introduction or your table of contents. Okay, so see how consistent this is, keeping it consistent. And then obviously what's the information in there will be also is the important information there. I didn't have anything in there, but I hopefully I gave you some good ideas um, on what you can do. Showing examples to helps past student examples. Any questions in regards to that? We're kind of running out of time here. I'm gonna wrap it up since we're a little over time. And um, uh, we'll, we'll be here tomorrow at the same time, so if you have any questions, let me know. We're going to go over your assessment three tomorrow, so I'll see you guys. Um, I'll see, hopefully see you guys then. All right, guys, have a great day, and um, I'll be talking to you soon.